Well, the Washington Commanders pick up their sixth win of the season, beating the Houston Texans 23-10. In Houston, Washington improves. Taylor Heineke improves the 4-1 and one as a starter. Magnificent. I, I, what can I say? Um, the Washington Commanders keep pace as they keep their playoff hopes alive. And let's get into it, shall we? I mean... I'm just I'm I'm excited. I was actually watching a football game that from start to finish, the Commanders dominated and they never let up. Um, quickly, folks, if you're new here, thank you for stumbling across this channel. Hopefully, you'll enjoy this channel enough that you'll want to subscribe. When you do, make sure you hit that notification bell so you'll never miss another video release here on the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel. As always. Thank you for those who continue to support this channel. I definitely need those subscriptions. And um, yeah, you know, if you've been watching this channel for a long time and you're not sure if you have subscribed, just check to make sure. You, you might have not subscribed yet. So if you do, please make sure you have subscribed. That, that, that's all I'm saying. Let's get into this, folks. So 23 to 10. You know, the commanders were favored. Of course, you know, us Washington fans, we were so worried about a letdown because after that big win against the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday night, it's always so Washington for us to come in and lay a big egg the next game. And it seemed like for us that happens about nine times out of ten. Luckily for us, we came in and we did the same exact thing that we did against the Philadelphia Eagles. We ran the football that seems to be the identity that this team is trying to establish, and I think that is the perfect thing that the Washington Commanders need to do. We did just that. Things started off slow, three and out. Not the best start, but we kind of started the same way against the Philadelphia Eagles, and then slowly the offense finally started kicking in there, but the defense actually started the scoring off with Kendall Fuller picking the football off for a pick six and getting the Commanders off to a 7 to nothing start. And we held on to that 7 to nothing lead there quite a bit until finally the offense decided they wanted to join into the party and scored. And, and before you know it, honestly, the game probably got too out of reach for the Houston Texans. But if we take a look at some of the stats here, Taylor Heineke, 15 of 27 for 191 yards. He averaged just hair over seven yards per pass. Uh, no touchdowns, but no interceptions. Very important. He he did throw a near pick. Probably should have been intercepted. You're going to hear that in almost every single game that Taylor Heineke plays because that's just that's what's going to happen. Um, the running game, though, continues to be pretty strong for us. Antonio Gibson, 18 yards or 18 carries on 72 yards, average about four yards per carry. And Brian Robinson Jr., 15 carries for 57 yards, not quite as many yards rushing, but they're, you know, a little less, 3.8 average per carry, but still pretty even. I mean, not fab, I mean, not fabulous numbers, but not, not too bad numbers. Curtis Samuel had a couple of carries there. Mostly those those little pop type of uh, um, passes, I guess you would say. Um, you know, when he comes in the motion, they kind of pop it off to him. And then uh, another one where it's one of those tall sweeps to him. Um, 18 yards rushing for him. Uh, Logan Thomas, though. I'm, I'm, let's give it up for Logan Thomas, man. I tell you, he has been virtually in a you know, invisible this entire season. He's been hurt. You know, he had to come back from the ACL tear. I knew he was going to be kind of slow to come back. A lot of players are. One reason why that, you know, Chase Young is slow to come back. But then he got the, the ankle injury that kept him, I think it was the ankle injury, that kept him out for a little bit. So it's it's been frustrating for Logan Thomas, but he had he had a really good game today. Five catches for 65 yards, averaged 13 yards per catch. So 
he did pretty well there. Uh, Terry McLaurin, four catches for 55 yards. Uh, Antonio Gibson had three receptions. Cam Sims had a reception. Jahan Dotson had a reception. Curtis Samuel had a reception. So Taylor Heineke doing his best to spread the football around. The biggest thing you want to talk about, though, is the defense today, and especially that front four. Oh, man. Jonathan Allen, Montez Sweat, Ron Payne, Casey Tuhill, James Smith-Williams, and some of these other guys coming in, F.A. Obade, guys like that coming in and just getting sacks. I felt like there was 100 sacks in this game today. There was five sacks, but it felt like it was more than that. You know, Montez Sweat got a couple of uh, credit for a couple of sacks. Jonathan Allen got credit for a couple of sacks. Deron Payne had a sack. I mean, that defensive front put a lot of pressure on Mills today, even without Chase Young. We're getting Chase Young back next week. I'm excited about that. But this defensive front has dominated even without Chase Young. You know, I'm reading a lot of things on Twitter from a a lot of other fans and, and other social media places where they're like, I wouldn't be unhappy if they just shut Chase Young down the whole season. We don't need him. Let's wait and see how Chase Young is going to be when he comes back. All right? Now, I'm not saying that he's going to come back and dominate, but I think people are underestimating the value of Chase Young. I think they really are. Even last year, before he got hurt, a lot of people were like, he he only got one sack. But they didn't understand the other stuff that he was doing that allowed some of the other guys to get in there and get pressure. And I think that when you get Chase Young back in there, it's going to be totally unfair for the other guys on the other side of the football. I mean, I'm I'm the big Chase Young fan, and I think to, you know, call him a bust or anything like that at this point, it's just, no. Yeah, I read this one thing, I think, on, on the Facebook uh, forum where it's like, you know, if you think that we need Chase Young this year, then you don't know football. Just stupid things like that. It's, it's dumb. It's really dumb. Yeah, of course we need Chase Young. And I think you'll understand once Chase Young is 100% and he gets back in there and he plays. At 100%, you'll realize we need Chase Young. Um, just, uh, that's, that's my opinion. I know I, I try to sugarcoat some things in, in my uh, videos cause I try not to be too, uh, controversial, but I, I'm just going to call it like it is. I, I think it's just dumb when you try to write off some of these players too quickly. I've been, uh, you know, guilty of that and it, I've had to eat crow every single time so I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore um, you know Washington's defense started off they got a pick six Kendall Fuller who honestly I've been a little hard on Kendall Fuller this year and he got a pick six against Mills you know the, the offense started off really slow like they have been so it was great that we were able to get that pick six and, and get up 7 nothing early because it really helped the the team as a whole to be up and have the lead like that and to be able to, you know, slowly get the offense kind of worked out. And then finally the offense started to get things rolling. And then once they got things rolling, before you know it, it was really honestly – it was out of the reach for the for the Texans. I mean, there's just no way. The way that our defense was playing, there's just no way that the Texans were going to be able to come back in this, this football game. The, this football game, honestly, was exactly the way that Washington needed to play. They needed to come out and dominate all phases of the game. You know, while the offense was okay, while Taylor Haneke was okay, you know, he wasn't spectacular, but... He played well for the most part, and that's more than what you can ask for. He didn't throw any picks, but he could have because he had one interception that was dropped. So, 
you know, he, he's not perfect. He needs to continue to work on that. But for the most part, I think he's starting to kind of tighten up his play. And you need that going down the line. I mean, if the, the commanders do somehow make the playoffs, Taylor Heineke is going to have to play like a playoff quarterback, right? You don't play just to get into the playoffs. You play to win the playoffs. So, you know, that that's that's what remains to be seen out of Taylor Heineke. But, again, I'll say this. he It's the right move to name him the starter for the rest of the season. I didn't make a, a video just dedicated to that because, honestly, I felt like by the time I was able to... If you hear the noise in the background, it's my cat. Um, and by the time that I made a video on that, I figured... There were there was no there was no reason it'd be old news, but yeah, I, I agree with that. I think he's worlds better than Carson Wentz at this point. You know, Carson would be ready if something happens to Heineke and Carson needs to come in. Maybe that's the point that we put Carson in. But other than that, um, it's the right move to to have Taylor Heineke named the starter for the rest of the season. I just I just think that the team is a better team. They're a different team when. Taylor Heineke's in there. Um, so overall, yeah, overall, uh, great, great win by the Washington Commanders. Now they face the Atlanta Falcons next week. That's going to be a very tough game. The Falcons played a tough game against the Bears and uh, came up with the victory in the last uh, few seconds there with the Bears. And so, you know, they're, they're not too far behind. They're, uh, I believe they're four and six if I'm not mistaken. So, um, you know, they're going to be playing for the playoff lives. Of course, you know, Washington is as well. So it's going to be a very important game for the commanders. They need to beat the Falcons because then after that, that's when you really start to get into the meat and potatoes of your NFC East um, games there. The Cowboys, uh, the Cowboys one more time. The Giants twice, and so th those are three extremely important games, and then the Falcons game coming up. So, folks, it's it's heating up. You know, six and five right now, above five hundred, and sitting there just about half game out of that last wild card spot. And it's so great for the Commanders at this point to be playing meaning meaningful football. What can I say? left hand up man hey you stayed until the very end thank you so much watch another one right now